Hello everyone, this is Fernando from Moonspell and you're watching The Offering. It's been a while, but we're very happy to see you back touring North America. How is it so far? It's uh, very good. I mean, um, last time we've been here, we did a tour with Septic Flash in 2015. And then we had a short run with the Epica 2016. But uh, we also wanted to um, you know, wait for a while. We still had um, more dates coming from uh, for Extinct. But uh, then we got a new album in the way and DVD and etc. So we were kind of waiting for the right package, really. That's very important for us after all these years to be able to uh, play with bands. With all due respect for all the other bands, but we want to be in something that really fit in. And that's the case with Dark Tranquility and Morpheus and Omnium. Um, great people, you know, we are all kind of contemporary. Uh, from the European metal scene, so I mean, to the Morpheus 20 years ago in the States. So it's a um, great atmosphere, great shows, and um, above all, um, great music that people are like really um, enjoying it, you know, because the combination of the four bands works really well. Best tour possible, in my opinion, yes. in terms <laughs> of European bands. Uh, as you were saying, uh, there was a lot going on for Moonspell. So first, let's talk about 1755, uh, this very dramatic album. Um, what inspired it? Well, that, that was quite unexpected, but um, in the end of the day, I think it was a great decision just to stop you know, everything and to make a, a new album because um, there was not like a, a big plan or a big strategy. Uh, we just, um, after Extinct and after all the touring we did, we were uh, kind of working on the on what became which bow under the spell on the DVD. And um, Napalm uh, wanted to make um, a really special edition, but had a different idea for the DVD. And um, they just talked about us having new music. We said no, um, not we not going to make like new music to make on the DVD. But then I kind of, um, it, it kind of, the idea kind of stuck with me, and we decided to make a whole um, full-length album. You know, <clears throat> the inspiration is the first of November of 1755. The album is called 1755. Uh, it's a big, important day in the Portuguese uh, history, and um, obviously my first contact was, um, you know, in the classrooms, high school. Um, in Portuguese history we talked a lot about that event that changed so much the face of Portugal, how Portugal was especially the capitalism and, and also the rest of um, of Europe back then in, when it came to um, religion, uh, philosophy science and I decided it was just too good you know, to um, turn down You know, sometimes musicians are like where, when is our muse you know, coming down on us and um, this 1755 was like something really spontaneous. So we, quite quickly we did the album and um, did it in Portuguese. And um, people were very surprised about it. And uh, for us it was just um, a good thing that we were like, probably since we formed as a band, looking also for the right piece of the, our Portugal uh, history to tell about that could be so dramatic and so eventful, so I think with 1755 we really opened the new door for Moonspell as well. How was it for you writing the lyrics in Portuguese? Because you got used to writing them in English pretty much. Well, I'm not an English native right. speaking person, so um, I don't think immediately in English, you know, and I don't live in an English speaking country, so I live in Portugal, so besides touring, when I wake up talking English, um, when I wake up in Portugal, I talk Portuguese. All the time so I have to say the process was quite cool and quite fast um, I came up with the lyrics very fast I had a lot of research done in the past about 1755 in the earthquake so I just went through the old archives and uh, see what was coming from there and reading some old books about the earthquake um, as well and then I just um, you know as the lyrics were in Portuguese and the album was a bit more fast and furious I just um, devoted a lot of time to make it very clear sounding uh, especially because it was in Portuguese and also to make it very rhythmical so um, actually it was such a it, was, it wasn't such a different or difficult uh, process because um, I think it was more immediate to me to think about things and not having to 
kind of translate them into my brain into English if it works or not. And um, it was um, quite easy, actually. Do you think uh, you, you would like to write more songs in Portuguese in the future? Yeah, I mean, 1755 is, is a concept album, so people should not take it as the follow-up to Extinct. Right. The follow-up to Extinct, we are working it slowly right now, probably to record and release in 2019. It's going to be an album uh, mainly in English. But um, 1755 was so special and it also shook things up for us um, here and there that um, we decided it was not like a, just um, you know a closed door but something more of an open window because uh, Portuguese history is long, eventful, so it's Portuguese literature. It's, um, we definitely love it, you know, and um, it can be why not if we find another you know, concept as strong as 1755, we have to look deep, like a love story or a death story, this, you know, 800 years of history plus, <laughs> so there's a lot to uh, choose from. We'll definitely entertain the thought of making another Portuguese, um, um, Portuguese written album, yeah. You also had choirs and orchestra on this album, really a lot compared to the usual. Uh, do you think you would like to do that in, in other releases? Well, to be honest, not really, no, <laughs> no um, because um, I think that the symphonic uh, element, the boost of the symphonic and the operatic or choir mm -hmm. elements was really cool for uh, 1755, uh, uh, but I think nowadays it kind of lost the magic. Obviously, that Moonspell is an old band and we've, you know, did a lot of albums and already worked with a lot of people, orchestrations, etc. So it all boils down to a question of taste. And I think that the things that are done in 1755, they're very tasteful. They really have to do with the music. They really tell the story. It's not just something that we put there so we could jump in the symphonic bandwagon mm -hmm. that we don't even like or have anything to right. do with. So I think the, um, the new album will probably not have so much um, of that. We want to make um, a different kind of music, more of the follow-up to Extinct, as I said. So it, it's not going to be so dramatic and so uh, theatrical, bombastic yeah. or sort of theatrical or maybe kind of another form of um, theatrical but with the 1755 this really everything really fell into place yeah. and also recently just last month i think mm -hmm. you released the live uh, lisboa under the spell which is a massive uh, 3d yeah. set dvd and documentary what made you decide to do this right now well I think it was high time for us to release another live album DVD because um, it's been more than 10 years since we released our only DVD available, which uh, is Lusitanian Metal that was recorded in, in Poland. Obviously, one, the, the priority for us, on top of our list, was to record a, a gig in Portugal, in Lisbon. And sometimes it sounds easy, but it's not. To gather all the conditions, to get the proper venue, the proper promotion, to sell out you know, 4,000 capacity. It's, it takes a lot of work and a lot of planning, but we never stress, like, we do things um, whenever we feel like. It's uh, been like this with Moonspell, and I hope it never changes. So we decided to, if we wanted to make a, like a DVD, we wanted to make something really epic and to make it count, because of, with all due respect, you know, sometimes what the fans get, it's a, a band live at the festival, and even though it can be a good show, it's not as great as you have your own show and right. your own ideas and your own stage set up. So as we wanted all of this, um, it took a while to find the right people. But um, in the end of the day, it was like, a, you know, the, the work, the process of this edition was as epic as the final result, because there was a lot of stuff going on, the document documentary, the three sets, um, you know, everything around was still a show. So it was not something that we're just posing for a DVD. You know, we had to play a show and a big one. So everything fall into um, into place, you know. I went through the process, like when I, we had the first ideas with the director, Vitor Castro, very gently, because I always knew that it was, it was going to be something really, really awesome in the end, because the sheer content of it and um, the fact that we were playing for more than three hours and that we let people get in a little bit more into what we are off stage with the doc documentary was already something um, to look for, and I think then Napalm just topped it with amazing editions, 
you know, and Nestor Avalos from Mexico did an amazing cover. So, you know, it's not like everybody's crazy about DVDs these days or Blu-ray, but um, in the end of the day, when it's worth it, people are gonna get it. And Lisboa Under the Spell, it's been like a really, really big success, yeah. And you performed entirely Wolf Art, Religious, and Extinct. What made you choose these three albums? Well, uh, Irreligious was the first choice because uh, we were celebrating also the 20 years of the release of Irreligious. So um, there was quite a choice for us and it was a centerpiece of the, um, of the show. But on the other hand, it's not a secret that you know most of our fan bases and the foundations of our music lay on Wolf Art and um, Irreligious. So we decided also to add Wolf Art because also we didn't have the opportunity to do something alike for Wolf Art, so the opportunity was here. But also, as Moonspell is not intended to live on the shadow of its past, it was very important for us on that day to play The Extinct uh, on its uh, entirety because it was the album we had before 1755. Um, and also for people not to lose our musical thread, you know, and not to go in this um, really stupid debate that doesn't make sense in 2018 if bands were better in the 90s or, you know, in the 2000s. You just have to give music, you know, a chance, <laughs> like someone would say. And um, I think that um, it was um, the right choice to do. We have many albums, we could have played many albums. Well, it would be mainly impossible then to watch the DVD. It's already pretty long, <laughs> it's demanding. So um, I think musically, the content was definitely the right for what Moonspell um, is in 2017, 2018. Is there another album that you would like to add? Well, not at that day. Not <laughs> that, yeah, exactly. If you would have done another weeks. show, let's say. Yeah, we can entertain the thought of here and there doing this for every album. I think that would be mm. awesome. But uh, time is an issue for us. So, right. Sin Pecado just turned 20 years. So, but already we are, 20 years. Yeah, we're already wow. heavily touring. But when we, got, when we get the time for sure, we will relearn some of the songs of Sin Pecado and throw them. Um, into the set list, but um, I think there's many albums that we would like to play, you know, some songs off or the entire album. I think it's a really good uh, good idea to, to do that. I like when bands do that. Well, if it sounds proper, if it right. doesn't, it can be a major disappointment. But I think that we got lucky and everything sounds very good on the DVD and on the CD and on the live show on the day. So, yeah, we got away with it, definitely. I'm thinking about your previous albums. Are you happy with all of them or you wish you had done something different? <clears throat> well, neither one thing or the other yeah. because um, the wish to do something different, it's like uh, something that, that you can do. Like for instance, we, we recorded all our early stuff from the early 90s in 2007 and it really sounded good it was definitely something that we were not so sure about and definitely convinced us so here and there yeah we probably will have changed something but not doing uh, uh, differently that's um, that's impossible and I also think that uh, the albums um, uh, for us songwriters and uh, people who record them they also have a lot to do with what we have been through our lives, you know. So sometimes when we are together as a band, we don't talk about 98, we don't talk about 96, we don't talk about 2000, we talk about, remember, uh, antidote times, remember, that's the way we kind of organize ourselves chronologically. So I think that um, we just have to accept the albums with all its virtues and failures, because sometimes it, you know, sometimes the bands are not at their best when they have to go to the studio. Sometimes they are, and it's up to you throughout the years to think and to work hard to be at your best. And I think Moonspell album, through album, especially on Extinct, we could reach a really good shape with the band. And in the end of the day, that's what really makes a difference for us. And what is most important for you as a vocalist and composer at this point of your career? Quality. I'm too old to do um, <laughs> stuff that it's, you know, trendy or, um, you know, copy other bands. I think that everything that um, bands that already have more than 25 years like us, we turn to be this uh, 
more um, less of mass production and more into fine jewelry or something like that. So um, that's why our releases right now, people are very impressed about the quality of them, about the concept, because um, they are not made to uh, generate a minimum recording commitment. They are made when we feel inspired and when we have to do them, DVD or not, everything has to make sense and everything has to uh, follow up a certain, uh, let's say, concept or line, that line, the guideline of that path is definitely um, quality on the releases, yeah. So it becomes even harder to be happy during well, the I recording, mean, uh, writing, right? Cause if you, you want to be happy, you want to be a musician. I think right. frustration is much more <laughs> helpful for musicians if they can handle it, they can turn it into great songs. And um, I think that um, even though we probably have great records and people say, yeah, we have legendary records, mm, I'm happy with all, all of them and I'm happy with all of them. I think that's the way also to be um, in music, to understand that you're not perfect, you don't have to sell that to people um, as well. You just have to um, run through a line, a finishing line that it's always moving you know, forward into the future until you decide it's not... Um, anymore so um, yeah I mean uh, also uh, we're happy with what we have you know we know nothing is for granted especially not to um, make music that probably will challenge more the fans than entertain them you know but if you find the right balance yeah that's a secret there now besides these awesome releases so your book uh, Purgatorial is mm -hmm. finally available in English tell us a bit about it well, it's a um, collection of um, all the books I wrote in Portuguese. I finally had the, the time and the energy to translate them into English. I said them many times and I gave up yeah. until I found the right tone of the book, which was basically to re rewrite it and um, to let the original flow um, be there, but um, <clears throat> not to pretend like um, the Portuguese jokes work in English and stuff like that, you know. So there was a lot of hard work. Uh, trying to do that. So um, I had it out on Alma Mater Records, that is our own publisher. We're almost through the first um, edition. I tried to have it in North America, but I simply didn't have the time to find a publisher. Um, mm -hmm. But um, w probably when we get back to North America, it will be on the merch booth and some, some, some bookshops. It's just a slow process, but it went very well because we took the book on the road and it seems like a lot of people wanted to read the, the poetry because they knew about it and there was like some demand when are this is going to be available in English and it was a really kickstart um, um, thing for uh, for the whole label and all the other books and um, I mean it's hard to describe what I write there there's poems about cats and poems about uh, war and love you know I think there's a subject for everyone really if it, even if it's delivered on a twisted poetic way yeah are you working on another book right now? Um, I'm writing a book from the road mm. because um, I stopped sharing tour diaries and I mean, and um, I wanted to make it something serious because being on the road is also a lifestyle, yeah. you know, and especially for a Portuguese uh, person, it's something that you don't take for granted. It's not something that you expect to do when you you were a kid, you know. Our expectations are not like the rock and roll dreams of being on the road. <laughs> Yeah, they are different and um, now for the new generations of course but not for ours so um, I want to write a book about it to release um, next year but um, I'm also working um, as an editor for our own publisher so we're going to have books from uh, Thiel Lindemann mm -hmm. Rammstein the singer the second poetry book is going to be in Portuguese available for the first time through our label and I'm always uh, searching stuff poetry fiction non-fiction we're just um, starting off, I think we'll have five books up to the end of the year, which is not a lot for um, a label, but you have to start somewhere, <laughs> you know. Definitely. And uh, I think that's gonna be, all right, so um, I, I'm also, when it comes to books, I'm also more like reading than writing now and helping people and, you know, just to get the book together, like, you know, correcting the mistakes and discussing some stuff with the authors, that kind of stuff. It's awesome. And even if we know the future is dark, <laughs> right? Isn't it? <laughs> what other plans you have for Mespel? 
Well, um, this U.S. tour and um, a Mexican visit will probably, and some other sh one-off shows will probably be what we will be doing in 2018. And we really want to start uh, working on a new album. I think it's time. I think we are excited. I think we already found out what we needed to um, find out to start uh, working on it. So basically, mm, 2019 will be the year of probably Moonspell's um, new album and obviously more touring. Uh, I think there's a plan for us to coming back to, uh, to the States before the summer of 2019. So it's not like um, nothing revolutionary. You know, it's um, same old, same old. But um, it's always exciting you know, to work on new stuff and to start a little bit um, um, again. And obviously all the other plans, spend some more time in Portugal as well. It's been you know, a while since we stay like a long period with our families. So um, we'll see. We have um, lots of plans, but I think the biggest one is the new album, yeah. Then good luck with everything and thank, thank you, you for the interview. Thank you. We'll see you next time. All right.